Hello, I'm Jill Schneider. I'm a holistic practitioner, been a volunteer with the Annie Appleseed Project for a number of years, and I'm excited to uh, be here with Ann Fonfa, who is an advocate, a cancer survivor, and the founder of the Annie Appleseed Project. And we're going to be talking about her issues and where she's uh, come from, where she is, and where she's going. Thanks, Jill. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you because I have some really interesting news to share with the audience. You know, 26 years ago, in January of 1993, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. One of the things that happened was 18 lymph nodes were removed. I didn't know that was gonna happen, so I often say without my express or informed consent. Wow. And I had lymphedema all these years, swelling of my forearm on the left side, my hand for a while, uh, my underarm, my back, my chest. Very uh, annoying for people who have lymphedema. Some people have it, uh, leg, limbs, arms, chest, back, stomach. It can be anywhere. It's, it's very uncomfortable. Uh, so I believe that that led to what happened that I'm going to talk about. So in April of last year, I developed a lump in the groin. And, you know, I thought, and other people said, including my acupuncture, probably clogged lymph node. That seemed reasonable because my lymph system was mm -hmm. messed up. And doing acupuncture, by November we both realized this was not going away. In fact, it was getting bigger. So I had a scan done, and the scan said not really a clogged lymph node, something's going on. And so then I had to have a biopsy. I can't do general anesthesia because of my multiple chemical sensitivity, which in my opinion is related to the, all the other problems. So you know comorbidities, folks, where things, you have one thing, but it doesn't mean you can't have other things. So I was had a bad digestion, constipated most of my life. I believe that led to the multiple chemical sensitivity. I was uh, auto-intoxicated, as some people call it. Chemicals bothered me. So general anesthesia actually kept me awake. The first time I had it, which was 26 years ago, I didn't sleep for six nights in a row. Uh, you know, <sighs> that way lies madness. Let's just put it that way. So I uh, said to the surgeon, I have to have a local for this. So he had to send me somewhere else. Now finally, I got to Wellington Regional Hospital down here in Florida, in South Florida, and they did the biopsy, and the results came back in a few days, and it was very, very surprising to me and interesting. So what the pathology report said was that the, the lymph node is consistent with uh, non-Hodgkin's CD10 plus and B-cell lymphoma, also called follicular lymphoma, and low-grade. So... This time around, and the biopsy was actually done, believe it or not, 26 years to the day from the day I was told I had breast cancer. Well, that was ironic Whoa. in every way. And um, so low grade and consistent with. So now I need, I say, you know, to myself, okay, well, I'm going to get treatment right away. And I contact, and this time around, I know people and I know things and I understand nuances. Wow. So the first person that I talked to about it probably was Jill. <laughs> and, uh, and I also spoke to Lise Battaglia, who's a homeopath in Florida and Daytona, and she was treating me for sleep issues. And then she began to give me protocols for lymphoma. I also contacted Dr. George Wong, who's the herbalist in New York City, who produced Chinese herbal prescriptions for me and healed me of nine years of recurrent breast cancer. Most people know that story, it's all over the internet. Okay, so I got the herbs a couple of weeks down the road, and then Dr. Wong said, hey, you need blood work. No one suggested that. You know, I often hear there's coordinated care, but I can tell you this, I never get coordinated care. I mean, it, it didn't happen all those years ago, and it didn't happen now. So separately, I got blood work. I went to the Life Extension Foundation, which is a place I found in 95. They do supplements, they have magazines, they have articles, they do, you know, they gather research, which is what I also do, and I love that. So I looked up follicular lymphoma, and I couldn't figure out what blood test to get. So then I contacted Dr. Mark Rosenberg, who's a Boca Raton-based um, integrative oncologist, and he kindly told me what to do. So I went and had the blood work done, and that was super interesting because just like what happened to me with breast cancer, it doesn't show up in the blood. I only had one blood test during the breast cancer years that showed breast cancer, and that was right after surgery. So this time, it's now several weeks past surgery, and I have the blood work done, and it, every single uh, test within this category showed nothing. It was all you normal. You had surgery? 
I had the biopsy, the biopsy done, but I did not have the lump removed. It's still there. And in fact, Dr. Wong said, I need to not try and get rid of it, but to be followed at least with something, because apparently the blood work's not going to work. The next step is I'm actually going to see Dr. Rosenberg for an appointment and really talk about what this all means next um, on Monday. So that's just a few days from now. Now, let me say this. I'm not petrified because A, it's slow growing. And even when you look up the normal course of events using conventional treatment or not, and by the way, watchful waiting is one of the ideas. I don't believe in watchful waiting. People have seen that I've said that on other conversational videos. What are you waiting for? You know, you're waiting for it to get worse? What's that about? So of course I'm doing things already and I always have. I also consulted Dr. Ralph Moss who creates reports for people on various illnesses and he created a report for me about follicular lymphoma. And I have the list here of the most well-researched things in the natural world that I'd be willing to do. I also noted what some of the symptoms are that I have and that would be fatigue, but then again, you know, everybody's got fatigue and we are aging and so on. Uh, but I do like to take a nap. I work at home so I can nap when I need to. Night sweats, yes. <laughs> Menopausal. I've had hot flashes for many, many years. I have less of them now, but now I had white net, um, night sweats for the last maybe three years. Is that a symptom of this illness that I didn't catch? You know, maybe. I don't know. This is something I'm hoping that Dr. Rosenberg can clarify for me. Additionally, there was a loss of appetite for a couple of weeks, but when I found out that was a symptom, I purposely try to eat all my meals. Uh, and then itchy, it says. So I don't spray my house for, with chemicals for bugs. So my house has bugs. And sometimes the little tiny ants crawl on me and I can feel it. And you know, if you crawl on me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's gotta go. It's your karma. So, but uh, you know, but maybe I'm, am I itchy or not really itchy, but I'm, I feel like some things are on me some of the time, maybe more than before. You know, it's hard to know because we are suggestive, I'm suggestive. And when I find out itchy, I think, oh, maybe I am itchy, you know, maybe I'm not. I don't really know. But the things that I already do or am doing, I'm topically applying a CBD cream uh, with frankincense or Boswellia oil. Uh, also combined with um, medical cannabis. And I put that topically because, as some of you know, I've had breast tumors, um, well, I had them over a nine-year period, and about five years ago, I developed them along the scar line. But, you know, I had the world's slowest growing breast cancer. So if it was lump, if it, it probably is cancer, but so what? You know, it's certainly not life-threatening, and this treatment is controlling them completely. They're vanishing, but very slowly, and I'm okay with that. Um, it also suggests that acupuncture for symptoms, which of course I do every week anyway. It also suggests mistletoe extracts, and, and my acupuncturist and I are working on getting some of that that I'm going to try, along with the, the herbs. And I, you know, I discussed that with Dr. Wang, and first he said no to mistletoe, but you know, it's my protocol, so we had another conversation, which I said, I think it sounds good, and I'm willing to do it. So I probably will do that as well. Now, one of the things says Darko tea. I am, know already that I'm incredibly allergic to Darko because I tried that years ago for the breast cancer and I literally passed out on the subway. Fell, slid off the seat onto the floor. And may I say to my fellow New Yorkers, thanks for not helping me. Nobody did anything. I eventually woke up and got up and sat up, but I was, it was ridiculous and, and unfair, but that's the way life was. It also suggests here cannabis, yay. Um, cat's claw, which I'm currently taking. Chlorella, which I take every day and uh, so on down the line, Coley's, which I use for the breast cancer, Coley's toxins, with no effect. Now, my alarm is ringing, and that is because I'm taking homeopathic treatment for the lymphoma, so excuse me while I take my drug. <laughs> it's a very interesting protocol. It's 10 teaspoons of two or three different, right now it's two different, but on Sunday it's gonna be the third different thing. And I have to sip it. I think this is my last one. Yes. And it has no flavor, but it's a homeopathic, so it means that I mix it up when I do it in the beginning of the week on Sunday, 11 teaspoons with the drop, with the little tablets, and take 10 per day and refill it for the week. So that's fabulously interesting. Uh, taking it for sleep has been very effective for me. I stopped worrying about sleeping, which I hadn't realized was such a big factor. that I would lay in bed or be in the evening, um, you know, hanging out with my husband. He's watching TV, I'm reading, and thinking, oh, I might not fall asleep and being concerned. So that went away with the homeopathy, so that was pretty useful, I have to say. So I'm doing things right now like jumping on my trampoline, which I have at home, small trampoline, because that helps the, the 
lymphatic system flow. And clearly, I've got blockage, and I personally think it's related, although no one said that specifically. Uh, but these, you know, unfortunately, not a lot is known about any cancer. What's the natural course of any cancer? Does anyone know? I don't. But I think, you know, I experience it to a degree because, remember, I had 25 tumors on the left side, 14 after mastectomy. So I'm anticipating that the course of this, natural course of this lymphoma will be quite interesting. But it is follicular lymphoma, which is a particularly slow kind to begin with. And I'm quite confident that I'll find out on Monday that mine is really slow growing. But, you know, what they say is the course is 20 years. I'm 71 now, so, you know, I'm really not worried at all. First of all, as everyone knows, and I've said millions of times, we all are going to die. It's how you live that matters. And I have determined not to worry about having follicular lymphoma on top of breast cancer. And by the way, if anyone else has experienced that, you know, get in touch with me. Our website's AnnieAppleseedProject.org, and I look forward to your comments. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you again soon. Thank you, Anne. Authentic Anne. I love it.